Hi everyone, welcome back to GoFries. In this video, I'm going to talk about cleaning your graphics card. So first off, let's talk about why do you need to clean your graphics card. Now, the cooler on the graphics card works like the CPU cooler, as in the air cooler types, on your CPU. How does it work? It's that these fins on the heatsink and it has heat pipes and everything. What it does is that it takes the heat from the GPU and in some cases the VRAM as well and it absorbs the heat to this metal plate. Now these fins have surface area of which it will dissipate the heat and the fan blowing through the fins will help you dissipate the heat faster. Now let's put this aside. So on the graphics card, as you use it for a long time, there will be dust accumulation. Same with those CPU coolers. For this graphic card of mine, if you remember, I've been using it for a long time, even before my very popular Coolmaster NR200P review video. And even that, it was on the system for almost a year. And throughout the time, it's running 24 hours. It's doing gaming, folding, mining, and everything. And it's still doing all that today, even though it's out of the rig. So this um, the dust accumulation isn't all too bad but it's quite a lot already and I'm not going to wait until the dust accumulation is really bad. When it's really bad, it will obstruct the airflow like what I mentioned earlier. The fins, they are for heat dissipation. So when it's filled with dust and it's blocked, then the air wouldn't be flowing out properly. Then it's difficult to dissipate the heat. So what did I do? I cleaned it up. So let me show you the process of cleaning up first and after that we'll go into the benefits I get before and after. So let's dive into the cleaning part. In order to clean uh, this one, all I had to do was unscrew the points that hold the shroud. Now this varies from card to card. Some cards have more screws, especially bigger cards they have more screws or they have screws that are at more difficult to access places. It really depends on this the design. This one has only four screws that secure the metal metal shroud, so it's easy. However, some places might be difficult when the fan is still intact. So for the fans, you just need to remove the screws on that secure the fan on the whatever mounting that they have. And take note of other areas like say the cable. Sometimes you need to remove the cables in order to clean it properly. Now the fans, there are dust on the fan, but dust on the fan typically does not impact the uh, this uh, cooling performance much if not at all after all the air is still pushing however since i already opened it up i might as well do some cleaning on it so with all that done now i have a really clean graphics card and for those of you who are wondering why do we need to do this well check out the benchmark over here of which i've tested this card before and after and i set it to 50 percent rpm i use it at 50 percent rpm because it's a good speed, it's, it's not the best around, however, it's sufficient for to show the difference for this test. So as you can see, the before and after, we get lower temperature and faster average frame per second after the cleaning. So what does this mean? This means that when it runs cooler, the graphics card can have higher boost clock and it can perform better. The average frame rate might be very little difference to you, however, this actually shows that there is a difference and that you can improve it by cleaning. Now, here is a more complete benchmark of which I compare not just the after cleaning, but I also have the after cleaning with a fan speed at 50%, at auto and at 100%. And so you can see after the cleaning, even with the fan running at 50%, while it's not the maximum performance out of it, it is very close to the expected speed. While the one with a somewhat dirty or should I say somewhat clogged heatsink, you see that the performance is less. And you can imagine what would happen if the heatsinks are clogged, then you, the performance will be impacted even further. Performance aside, to me another advantage is actually about the noise. In every graphics card, the manufacturer would have said in the BIOS that there is a certain temperature that it must not exceed. For example, let's say if this card, just an example, let's say they set it to 80. And when it's clean, it can run at say 50% RPM, which is just nice. However, as the dust accumulates, 
dissipation is poorer, so it has to run faster, maybe 60%, so it gets noisier. And when it is getting more and more clogged up, you can imagine, in order to maintain at the same temperature level, it has to go even higher. And things really go down south to probably your car or system crashing when the clock is so bad that even at the maximum RPM, which is noisy, noisiest, and it still couldn't cool the car sufficiently. Now, you wouldn't want to get into that. So, as to how much, or should I say, how frequent should you do your cleaning? Well, I say it varies. Depending on dusty your environment, your system, whether it's 24 hours on, or it's just your power on as and when you need, and all that, I'd say give it a, just look at the system, the graphics card itself, every six months or so. If it's clean, there's nothing to worry about. You can dust it anyway. However, it's not something I wouldn't be too concerned about. So with that done, yeah, just keep your graphics card cool and clean, just like how you would keep yourself cool and clean. That's all from me for this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful and informative. If you like more of this kind of content, do check out the videos at the side and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.